All right, hello and welcome to another Expert Insight interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop Online Sales Magazine and Pipeliner Sales, um, Pipeliner CRM. And today I'm joined by Mark Babbitt, who is in Colorado. How are you doing, Mark? I'm doing fine, John. How are you? Great. And Mark, after a diverse career in Silicon Valley, Mark is now a mentor, facilitator and speaker, uh, helping people all over the world. And he's the co-author of the bestseller, A World Gone Social, How Companies Must Adapt to Survive. And this is what we wanted to talk about today, because Mark is one of the experts on the transition from the industrial age to the social social age. So let let's just kind of uh, baseline this, Mark. What do you what do you mean by the transition to the social age? Well, we you know we especially we leaders in 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 the corporate world, but also everybody that 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 has uh, had the privilege of following some really dynamic leaders understand that leadership itself has changed dramatically over the last decade or so, maybe even the last two decades. We we needed to transition from that autocratic, decisive, bold, I'm in charge, you're just lucky to have a job kind of guy. We call it, we, we now call it old white guy disease. Mm-hmm. Um, and we mean that quite literally. It was older boomer males that, uh, that were the primary leaders, you know, 20, 30 years ago. And we've had to make this transition now to, to, to be leaders that are more collaborative and more vulnerable and, and, and um, less decisive and, and 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 perhaps more open to other people's suggestions and it's been it's been a, a transition that we especially corporate america and, and western civilization in general just look at what's happening in washington dc right now has not made very gracefully at all and it's a it's it's a challenge that that uh, that requires our attention so how do you so how do you guard against when we, you go through big changes like that you have the autocratic on one side, one end of the pendulum, and then you have the other end of the pendulum, you know, maybe overly collaborative, maybe overly sensitive and all that. How do you strike the balance? Because often what happens in a transition is the pendulum swings all the way over here and there has to be a settling period, right? Well, and it, and it has. And mm. and if you don't mind me saying, it's even taken kind of a hybrid form. I mean, mm. you look at the, at the bra culture that happened in Silicon Valley, that wasn't an old white guy disease. That was, hey, let's all be buddies and let's yeah. act like we did in college. Mm-hmm. And that, as as we've now proven over and over again, that's not a great solution either, nice. right? So, so when we work with leaders, we we talk a lot about yes, be vulnerable, yes, be an active listener. Of of course, you want to be collaborative, but you're still the leader, and right. and and you can delegate a lot of things. You can delegate research and and process, but you can't delegate decision authority. Mm -hmm. And, and it's actually been quite reassuring to see people, especially in the last five or six years go, you know what, I do own this. Mm -hmm. And ultimately, this is my decision. And yes, I'm going to listen to as many, I'm going to surround myself with amazingly smart people. But at the end of the day, this is my thing. And I got to or our thing, and and we, I or we, have to make the best possible decision for us, and and so it it did swing, uh, you know, late late last decade we saw a, a huge swing, and unfortunately it happened right when the recession hit us. Mm-hmm. Then now everybody wants to be vulnerable. Well, <laughs> we're not we're not getting anything done. We're not we're not we're not correcting this this economic downturn we're in because nobody wants to make a decision and, mm-hmm. and it's, uh, it, it hurt us. Uh, and, you know, back then I'll, I will also add that the divisive nature, uh, especially here in the U S of our politics started playing a role there. You know, we stopped, mm-hmm. it stopped being for us and about me and, and, uh, that didn't help either. Yeah. I, and I, and I agree with you. And I think that's, uh, it's an interesting dynamic that we have in the workplace now where, uh, you know, people, people, I mean, I feel nowadays the number one people are walking on eggshells a lot of the time. Um, there's people are very averse to conflict, right? And yes, there used to be far too much conflict in the workplace by once upon a time. Now it's like everybody avoids it. Uh, again, it's like, how do you, how do you, how do you show people what are the right things to be focused on and what are things that really you're making the place, you're making the environment worse by doing? Well, well, our, the first key to that, John, is 
to value to focus just as much on values as you do mm -hmm. results right right if if we know the kind of company we we strive to be and here are the behaviors we need to show to be that then the, and everybody agrees to that in one form or another either 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 through helping with the decision making process or or just by learning it or through onboarding and 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 uh, you know uh, learning more and more about the company culture once you agree to that when you're not exhibiting those behaviors then it's easy to say, hey, guys, time out. Um, I know this is a tough conversation to start. God knows we're all we all want to avoid conflict right mm -hmm. now, but I don't think we're, we're I don't think we're on our best behavior right now. I, mm -hmm. I don't think we're 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 exhibiting those behaviors. And so let's take a time out, just regroup a minute, and let's start that tough conversation because we got to get that out of the mm -hmm. way. And 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 that's what we tell leaders all the time, John. Is part of being a good leader now is certainly being willing to start the tough conversations. Yeah. And then, and then, talk to me a little bit about. Uh, so you say we're we're transitioning in, into the social age, and most people like equate that. Well, it's all with social media and all of that, right? Uh, but in some ways, social media and all this connectedness has made us kind of slightly more disconnected, maybe slightly more superficial, maybe hiding behind technology too much. Um, so when you're talking about companies building culture and living values, how do you leverage the the technologies and the social elements, social media elements, in the best way, but not you, but not allow them to become something to hide behind. Well, what a great question. So, first of all, we, we especially with our leaders, but but also with our culture clients, we talk a lot about don't don't allow social media, digital media, to become an unproductive time suck. Mm -hmm. And and it it's it really has just just like our transition from the 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 industrial age to the social age it really has come full swing i mean i was i was recently in new york city in new york city and i was on the subway and which is there pretty wasn't sweaty single, <laughs> yeah and i wasn't there wasn't a single person who was looking up right and they, everybody's heads were in their phone every stop every time that we got bandwidth everybody's phone heads would go there was zero conversation zero eye contact and maybe in new york city that's not a bad thing but it was <laughs> I looked around and I kind of chuckled and went, wow, we have gone way too far. Mm -hmm. And here, so here's the key, John, is, is we now have the ability to connect with more brilliant people than we ever have in our lives. But it can't stop at social media. We have to pick up the damn phone. We have to find out how we can work together to create a mutually beneficial, long-lasting relationship that both of us will thrive within. And, and that's where we're stopping. That's where that's where the you know if if all we're doing is 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 thumb keyboarding and we're not actually building that human to human interaction we we have kind of failed the the the, the system and we certainly haven't lived up to the potential that social and digital media offers us yeah no i i have to agree uh, and it, it's it is amazing nowadays i mean you go into a restaurant whatever even the people sitting next to you at the table aren't talking to each other they're all on their phones so which well, makes and it happen, and th yeah. by the way that happens in our uh, home dining rooms too um <laughs> yeah, way too I often know. yeah yes. i know <laughs> which i think it makes it, it makes certainly makes it easier for people to go and eat on their own because once upon a time it used to be if you were sitting in a restaurant on your own you were conscious of the fact that everybody was looking at you now they're not looking at you so it's <laughs> at least there's an upside there somewhere That's right. yeah so when you've done work with companies could you give me some examples you don't have to name companies but just some examples where you've seen this transition uh being executed really well and how that was done and what the results were well i i will tell you um, that that our our best clients fall into one of two categories it is quite often that old white guy who wakes up one day and he says you know i'm i am getting up there and it's time to start thinking about not just the third quarter results, but my legacy. What what have I what have I brought to the world, and what am I leaving behind? And when that epiphany happens, when that transition, that personal transition happens, now they start looking at their company and going, well, what what is our culture? What are we known for? What do we want to be known for? What's the gap between current and ideal? And and so often, um, that that epiphany drives change, right? And and um, that that is maybe the best of all scenarios because there's little there's little selling that has to be done there. It's like okay, I just need to get it done. What 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 are next steps, right? Mm -hmm. The the other uh, probably just as common is is the leader who, um, based on marketplace demands, uh, including calls for different leadership, says if I'm not the right guy to lead this company right now, I better delegate it to somebody who is. Mm -hmm. 
and and maybe I don't need to be social. Maybe I don't need to be big on digital. Maybe I don't need a great relationship builder, but I better have a right hand person that does that right. does that does that all of that really well. And that is becoming more and more uh, common as as we as we break into the latter half of this decade, where where they just they're self aware enough to realize I'm not the right person, but I know who is, right? And 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 then they become a mentor of sorts, right? right? And and that that's uh, that is not a bad way to make a transition either. So you, uh, you mentioned culture there, and in a lot of organizations, culture happens organically or is left to happen organically it's not an active thing or something that's focused upon when you work with clients how how difficult is it to to help a company develop a, a deliberate culture as opposed to just have an organic one uh, spring well, up well you use the word organic we use the word accidental and right. and um, either one it mm-hmm. can be can be appropriate um, most cultures are organic um, some, especially when it turns uh, negative, like the bra culture kind of did, mm-hmm. um, it becomes accidental. And, and it almost always takes on the personality of the primary founder right. or the CEO, right, the leader. And, and so we sit down and we, we actually don't ask the leaders what kind of culture they want. We ask the employees. Mm-hmm. And, and we have a wonderful tool created by Human Synergistics where we can actually survey the employees and say, so what does it feel like to work here now? And how would you like it to feel? And that provides us with that almost instantaneous um, quantified number of how far are we apart from how things really work and how we want them to work. And then we take that to the leaders and go, okay, here's here's where we're not quite in line current versus ideal, but the good news is here's some levers for change. And here, here's mm-hmm. how we can start making a difference right away. And, and we haven't had a in the last 10 years, we haven't had a leader that once that said, oh, no, we're not doing that, right? They they want to build – everybody mm-hmm. wants to build a great company. Everybody wants to be a, bla- a, a great place to work. And so once we show data, then it's 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 not too hard to, to start building a plan to close that gap between current and ideal. Uh, so when you do this uh, assessment uh, this uh, with with uh, the employees, what are some of the common things that you found that come up uh, you know, on a regular basis? Well, it, it almost in in almost every case, um, there's three that come to the surface: mm-hmm. uh, communication, both top to bottom and bottom to top. Uh, people want to be listened to; they want to know they have a voice. Um, second is that is a, is this innate sense of fulfillment that we want from our work now? You know, people are tired uh, tired of trading dollars for for hours, mm-hmm. and they they want to know that they're contributing something bigger than that paycheck and bigger than themselves. And so that's number two. And, and number three follows along the same lines. They want to be recognized for doing good work. And, uh, and the industrial age, well, the fact is that kind, of, that kind of beat the crap out of us on that issue, mm-hmm. right? We just do your job, do what you're paid to do, earn your money, earn your keep. And, and uh, you know, the trade, is, the trade is real and it's fine. And now people are going, no, it's not good enough. And, and I really, besides the paycheck, I want to be recognized for doing good work. Mm-hmm. Um, tell me a little bit about this, this, the second one in particular, in particular this idea of, of fulfillment. Uh, because it, this, this is one that I find particularly interesting because we all want to uh, feel fulfilled and we want, to be, we want to feel that there's meaning in the work that we're doing. Uh, but... Maybe some people take a little too far, but, but so how do you how do you help people and organizations uncover the meaning and purpose in what they're doing? Well, what an, uh, another great question. The, the 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 reality is first there has to be some level of alignment, right? If my personal values, if my career goals don't match the the values of the company and and the trajectory of the company, then we have misalignment, and we're never we're never going to see eye to eye, right? Mm-hmm. We're gonna we're gonna trade dollars for hours, period, right? So that's the first thing. Second thing is we we have to figure out how we want to be recognized. I mean, the reality is everybody thinks well we'll throw a pizza parlor and we'll and we'll get Betty a plaque and we'll embarrass her in front of four hundred people. Well, not everybody appreciates mm-hmm. that. Right. It's it takes them well out of their comfort zone. So so and this is where things, John, like employee engagement. Right. We've been working on this employee engagement thing, trying to treat everybody the same, cued by a fancy software program that says, hey, it's Betty's five year anniversary. Go Mm -hmm. get her a plaque. Right. Right. 
we've been we've been um, playing that game for 30 years and and we spent billions of dollars to to fix employee engagement and it's even worse now than it was mm -hmm. because people don't need the plaque they don't need the the pizza they they just want a pat on the back figuratively or literally and say wow you nailed it today yeah. right and then th that walk from the front door to the car or to the train there there's a little bounce in the step there and and that's so that's what we help companies do is realize there's, especially when it comes to recognition and value and purpose, there there has to be first alignment and there has to be a human connection. And and that's something that a, a software program or a plat can't give us, right? Yeah. It, it, yeah. it has to be one-on-one. -on -one. Yeah, I I couldn't agree more, and I and, I'd, and uh, you know you worked in Silicon Valley. I worked in Silicon Valley during the dot com era, and I I remember well. And today, some organizations still repeat the the whole mistake of thinking a foosball table and a massage chair That's, that fixes that everything. Pods. Yeah, right. <laughs> that fixes everything. But guess what? After after a month or so, foosball table is about this thick in dust. Massage chair is broken, never gets used again. And nothing has changed, right? I mean, I think to your point, it comes down to people, people want something personal, right? They want to feel personal satisfaction. They don't want to be thrown a toy and said, there you are, good little chap, off you go. Well, well and that's it exactly. And, and unfortunately... I would say 80% of the companies from our experience are still fighting that to this day, John, that, mm -hmm. that we think if we buy the new toy, if we, if we have them chase the shiny object, right. The, 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 especially among sales teams, mm -hmm. right. Do a good job and we'll send you to the Bahamas for a week. Right. Well, that's great until a new job offer comes along with more money and a, mm -hmm. and a two week cruise and then you're gone. Right. Right. We, we know now that, the key to fulfillment, the key to satisfaction, the key to values and purpose alignment isn't that isn't that shiny object. It's creating that sense of community, a sense of belonging. Like if I left here today, I would actually miss the people that I work with. I'd miss my team. I'd miss the dynamic. I'd miss the work. And if when you create that kind of environment, nobody wants to leave. Right. And and not not only do they not want to leave, but now they start referring their friends. Right. And 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 we know we all know now how how employee referrals right. can can dramatically improve our, our hiring process. Well, for sure, because let's face it, hiring is still one of the hardest things. And and that's if just regular hiring when it comes to sales hiring. It's you can another magnitude. Um, so that idea of a, of a shared purpose, a shared community, shared goals, uh, that's really that's really at what's at, at the heart of the social age. Right. Yes, and and we we have a we have a term for that we use uh, here at Work IQ and on our career site over at U-Turn, and we call it workplace intelligence. Mm -hmm. It's what kind of leader will you respond best to? What kind of culture will you thrive within? It, it, is your are, is your purpose aligned with with the companies and and also your values? And uh, is there that sense of belonging? Right, and if you can look at that. Measure your own work workplace intelligence, and then certainly try to determine the company's workplace intelligence. The hiring process gets a whole lot easier because then we know going in there's a match. Exactly. Well, listen, Mark, it's been great talking to you. We're bumping up against the end of our time here, but before we go, I'd like you to tell the viewers a little bit more about yourself, about Work IQ, and about your um, recruitment side too. Well, we uh, about ten years ago, ten years ago next week actually, we launched a site called U-Turn that helps young professionals, college students, recent graduates ascend into the workforce, perhaps a little bit more, more gracefully than they would if they just said, hey, I got my degree, I'm now employable, which has never been the case. Um, and so we do a lot of pro bono work over there. Um, and then uh, we pay we, we pay our bills with the with this concept of workplace intelligence and work IQ.com, where we help companies identify where their strengths are in leadership and culture and, and purpose-driven performance. And so I'd invite everybody to check us out over there, and that's WORQIQ.com. Yeah, and, and I would uh, I would encourage people to check it out. And I think that's a great, if you want an initiative for 2019, I would say it's number one, figure out what your culture is, figure out what you want your culture to be, and who do you want to be as an organization? Wonderful advice. Yeah. All right, listen, thanks, Mark. My name is John Golden, Sales Pop Online Sales Magazine, Pipeliner CRM. See you all for another expert interview soon. Thank you.